Hi there, and welcome back, everyone. I appreciate you stopping by. This is Jennifer McGuire, and today I have a bunch of interactive cards for you that all have a pull tab surprise feature. I've done pull tab videos in the past, and I'll link to a couple here that you can check out if you want to. But today is all about pulling an element on your card and a fun additional image or sentiment appears. These were all inspired by a stamp and die set from Concord and Ninth. I'm going to use that set for several of my examples, but then I'm also going to show you how to create your own with different images. So yes, this is one of those videos that has techniques that you can use with products you probably have in your stash already. In fact, you could use stamps or dies. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the first example. It kind of sets the groundwork for all of the other examples. This is the Concord and Ninth Mail Drop Stamp Set and Coordinating Die Set. This brilliant set, this brilliant combo, is what inspired all of today's videos. So Concord and Ninth always has very well engineered products and this is a perfect example of that. From this you can create different pull tab designs, doors that open, lots of things. And I will be using these on most of my cards today. So let's start with this example here, and I think it's best if you start by looking at the finished card. So here's the finished card. It looks like a little bouquet of flowers in an envelope. But when you pull in the tab, there is a little sentiment that appears. This is really fun and very easy to do thanks to the products that I just showed you. Now for the background of my card, I'm using the Hero Arts Mail Jumble Stamp. This is a cling stamp that stamps beautifully. I decided to use my Misty stamping tool just so I can get really good stamped image, but you definitely could just ink up the stamp and press your paper onto it if you wanted to. I am using the Hero Arts Arctic uh, cardstock, which is a beautiful light blue, and I'm using Hero Arts Soft Pool ink. Okay, so now it's time to do some die cutting. I'm using a few of those dies that are in that Concord and Ninth Mail Drop set that I just showed you, and also some white and craft cardstock. Now this craft piece that I die cut here is going to fold up to make an envelope. What's cool is in the stamp set, they have these little lines that you can stamp along the edge just to get, give a defined edge to the edge of the envelope. That's a lot of edging, sorry. But it just gives a finished look. You could skip that if you wanted to, but I went ahead and stamped those with Gina K Craft Ink. Now on this funny looking piece that you see here that I've cut from white cardstock, I'm stamping these thin lines with Hero Arts Soft Pool Ink. This makes it look like lined paper, which I think is really fun to add to it, but you could skip it if you wanted to. This is the piece that will pull out of the envelope and have the secret sentiment on it. At the top of this piece, I'm going to put a cluster of flowers. So I stamped, colored, and die cut this piece, and it's from the mail drop set. That'll get glued on the top of this. So I'm just kind of holding it there so I know where to stamp my sentiment below. I'm using my Misty stamping tool just to make sure that I get it straight, and I stamped it with black ink. Okay, now back to our little envelope here. This is how it'll fold up to make a cute little envelope. But before we assemble it, I need to cut a slit in the bottom back of this envelope. This is what will allow us to have the interactive feature. This little slit die is included in the mail drop die set. Okay, now that panel that I stamped on over there on the left, that is four by five and a quarter, and will go on the front of our card. I need to put this slit on that too. So I held my envelope where I want it to be positioned and traced the slit onto it. And now I'm using that same slit die and to just tape it in place and then run it through our die cut machine. Now I have the slit on the front panel of our card too. Before we glue the envelope down, let's get the rest of our pieces assembled. So I want to have it so that there's a little tab that the person pulls on to reveal the sentiment. And I want them to know to pull on it. So I wanted to stamp pull here. So I cut a thin strip of white cardstock. You can see it's pretty long there. I stamped pull here with craft ink at the top. And the pull here is from that mail drop stamp set. I'm putting adhesive on the front of that strip. And I'm going to glue it to this back of this mechanism that will pull out from the envelope. So you can see the pull here is just peeking out of the top of the bouquet. That's the place where the person will pull to reveal the little sentiment hiding below the bouquet. 
Okay, so now we can start putting everything together. And this comes together very easily. And once you've assembled one of these cards, your mind will start spinning with other ways to use it. Okay, so I just slide the piece in and you can see that funny little feet on the bottom of that white piece that we stamped. That's to stop it from pulling out completely from the slit. Now I'm putting strong adhesive on the back of our envelope and we'll add this to the front of our panel making sure that the slits line up. Once I've done that I can add our little slider piece here and then close up our envelope. So I'll just put a little adhesive on these two little flaps and then I can fold it up and there we have our little envelope formed. Now I can add that bouquet to the top. I couldn't add the bouquet before or we wouldn't have been able to fit it through the slit that we created on the envelope and cardstock. But now we can, so I'll just glue that right to the top. And then also for a little decoration, I created a red heart, uh, die cut heart that'll go right on the front of the envelope. Now it's time to assemble our card. So I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I'm going to take some liquid adhesive and just put it around the outside edge only. That's really all we need because we want to allow for movement of that pull tab when I pull it up and down. So really you just need adhesive around the outside edge. I'll throw, show you a few other options throughout this video. Okay, so once I have that adhesive on there, I can go ahead and add that to our note card and then give it a few minutes to dry. For some shimmer, I added my tonic aqua shimmer pen and some glossy accents to that heart just so it would stand out a bit. Now I thought I was done at this point, but I got this Essentials by Ellen Handful stamp set. I just had to order it. I thought it was so clever. And I thought it'd be fun if that hand there on the bottom left would hold the card or the envelope that's on this card. So I went ahead and stamped, colored, and cut out that hand. And I'm going to tuck it around that envelope so it looks like the hand is reaching out and holding that envelope. I thought that set would be fun to mix and match with lots of different stamp sets that I have. So I'll go ahead and tuck that on to the envelope and then trim off the excess. I also stamped Happy Mail with black ink underneath the envelope and that's from the Mail Drop Concord and Ninth stamp set. Okay, so once I have that glued in place and trimmed off the excess, I did also stamp on my envelope. Throughout this video, I used the Ink Road I Arted stamp set, which I think is so funny. And it's got lots of fun, crafty sentiments on it that I think work great on envelopes. So all of today's envelopes, I use that set. So here's a look at the completed card. All you do is pull the pull tab and you can see the greeting that's tucked inside. Such an easy thing that you can do with lots of different images. And I'll show you some variations here in a moment. Here you can see the glossy accents that I added to that heart and how it gives it some shine. And I also put a tiny dot of glossy accents in the center of each flower and I added it to her fingernail so it had some shine. I had such fun making this one that I went ahead and made another example and I just changed it up a bit. I'm not going to show you the whole process because it's very much the same. I just used a few different products. On this one, I used the Lawn Fawn Candy Hearts. These are so cute and they cut the little word inside along with the faux stitching. And that fit nicely into the little envelope from the Concord and Ninth Mail Drop die and stamp set. Now you can see I used that Hero Arts background stamp again. This time I used it on Hero Arts Sand cardstock, which is a light craft. And I stamped it with white unicorn pigment ink. I then created a teal colored envelope and I also have the little pull tab where I stamped a sentiment. And on the top of that pull tab, I have the candy heart die cut from Lawn Fawn. This time, instead of using a white cardstock strip for the pull here tab, I used a piece of acetate, just some clear packaging that I had left over, and I white heat embossed pull here on that. That way it was a little more subtle instead of having the white sticking out. So this just shows you that you can use other products together to create these pull tab surprise cards. They're really fun to make and a great way to use your supplies. Okay, now it's time for this little cutie here. This one, you pull the balloon and a little doggy with an envelope and a sentiment comes out of a little post box. So this one, I use some of the same products, but also some older products I had sitting around and have been wanting to use. So here you can see how you pull the balloon and there comes the surprise. 
Now let's start by creating the background on this. For this one, I use the Concord and Ninth Flower ba Patch Turnabout Stamp Set. I've been wanting to use this one. I think it's such a fun background. If you've never used a turnabout set from Concord and Ninth, I will link to a how-to video here in the top corner and in my description below. I encourage you to watch that because I'm going to kind of fly through it here. With the turnabout stamp, it comes with a guide. And what I do is I put that guide that you see there into my MISTI right in the corner. Then I take the turnabout stamp and line it up with the guide. See how I'm lining up the images? Once I have it lined up, may I make sure I have the guide in the corner of my MISTI, press the MISTI door down onto it, and that gets it set. Now we're ready to do all of our stamping. I'm temporarily adhering a piece of white cardstock onto that guide right on top of it. This is a uh, four by five and a quarter inch piece of white cardstock. Okay, so now I'm starting with my first ink. We'll use four ink colors and rotate each time. First, I'm using Simon Says Stamp Fog Ink, which is my uh, go-to light gray ink. And I'm going to double stamp that just to make it a little bit darker. Once I've stamped that, I will rotate my guide one time. So you see how it's rotated? Put it right into the corner and go on to my next ink color. This is Lawn Fawn Moonstone Ink. I decided to make a soft background, so I reached for lots of my favorite soft inks. I do double stamp them to make a little bit darker, but I like having the option. I discovered that Lawn Fawn has many great soft colors, including this Moonstone blue color. Next, I'm going to use the Lawn Fawn Ballet Slippers, and then I will rotate again and use the Butter Ink. These are all great soft color inks that work well together. Okay, so after I did my stamping rotating each time, I end up with this beautiful, fun flower patch background. Now it's time to create the elements for the front of the card. I used this older Mama Elephant stamp set called Playful Pups. I thought that pup with the envelope in his mouth would be perfect for coming out of the mailbox. Along, this, along with this, I used the balloon image that you see on the top left from this Mama Elephant Big News stamp set. A lot of stamp sets have little balloon images that would work for this, but you could also draw your own if you wanted. And note that these little sentiments would be perfect for pull tab surprise cards like we're doing today. Plan to make some with this set in the future. I also use the Honey Bee One of a Kind stamp set. I've used this in a video before and I'll link to it here. This just has lots of different words for interactive cards and I decided to use the word pull from this one. And finally, for a small sentiment on our little pull tab surprise, I use the Mama Elephant Mini Messages stamp set. I've been using this stamp set a lot because it has all the occasions that fit nicely into small areas like a pull tab or even a little circle or heart die cut. You can even use the flip me, pull me, slide me, and shake me uh, messages on here for any interactive cards that you may do. Okay, now it's time to create these elements for the front of the card. First, let's create the pull tab itself. On my pull tab, I'll have the little doggy on the top, and right below it, I'll have the sentiment. I decided this time to make it one big piece so that it smoothly go goes in and out of our little post box. So here's how I did it in one piece. I stamped my little image at the top, the sentiment underneath, and now I'm drawing pencil lines down from that and I'm going to cut along those pencil lines. You could instead cut a, or die cut the little pull tab piece like I showed you earlier, but I like this option. The reason why is this little dog is gonna go really far down into the mailbox, past the slit, and I didn't want his paws to get cut on the slit. So by making it one continuous piece, it'll slide in and out nicely, which you'll see in a moment. Now I have my little mailbox that I created from the Concord and Ninth Mail Drop set, and I'm using that same slit die to cut a slit into the front of this. See how all these pieces work together in different ways. Okay, so now you can see how the doggy can go in and out from the slit in the mailbox. I went ahead and did some quick coloring with Copic markers, and I listed all the colors I used below in my description. Okay, now it's time to put little stopper feet on the bottom of this pull tab. So I'm going to pull out the dog as far as I want him to come from the mailbox. I want him to come out to right, right about there. 
Now I'm going to flip this over and I have a piece of white cardstock that I'm going to glue onto that pull tab. So I have little feet sticking out the side. So basically I'm mimicking that pull tab piece that is included in the mail drop die set. But this way I can make it custom size. So I've got those little feet sticking out so I can cut the excess off the bottom here. But first I want to test it, make sure it comes out to the right amount. Yep, it does. So now I can trim off the excess. I also wanted to use the stamp that says post. Now this allows you to get kind of a dimensional look on the front of your mailbox. So I stamped that with Versamark ink and added white embossing. So you can see how it ends up having this dimensional look to it. Okay, we have all of our pieces ready. All I need to do is glue the little balloons to the back of the doggy's head so it looks like it's coming off of his collar. And I did stamp pull onto those balloons using that Honey Bee one of a kind stamp set that I showed you earlier. Now we can trace the slit from the mailbox onto our background. I'll use the slit die to cut right in that same place we traced. We can glue our mailbox right onto the front of our panel, lining up those two slits. And now we can assemble our card. So here you can see how those balloons kind of peek out along with the top of the doggy's head. Now on the back here, this time I decided to instead use foam tape. You could definitely use liquid adhesive like before, but I wanted to stop this so it didn't go too far in. So I put some foam tape below it and then all around it. I didn't do, do anything too close to our pull tab feature. There's no need to. It'll move freely on its own. Once I have foam tape covering the back, I'm going to add this on to a Hero Arts Periwinkle note card that I created. And then I can go ahead and test it out and see how it works. When you pull on the balloons, our little doggy comes out. But what I discovered is that balloon is kind of weak because the, it's kind of thin where the strings are. So to give it a little bit more stability, because you're going to be pulling this up and down, I die cut another balloon just from white cardstock, and I'm going to glue it to the back so it's doubled up. This just gives it some strength and some stability so that when you pull it up and down, it'll not fold on itself. So here's the completed card I also stamped on a matching Gina K craft envelope. And there you can see how the little doggy's peeking out. And when you pull it, there's a little sentiment and that cute little envelope in his mouth. So this is just a variation of the first two cards using the Concord and Ninth mail drop set and some other stamp sets that I've been wanting to use. I tell you, nothing makes me happier than combining different products from different companies together on one card. Okay, I have one more pull tab example for you, and then I have a bonus card. But for this pull tab example, I'm going to use different products, but the design or the mechanism of this card was inspired by those Concord and Ninth mail drop stamps and dies. However, this time, when you pull the tab, the sun comes up and you see a rainbow. So what I'm encouraging you to do is look at the stamps and dies you have and think about what kind of pull tab designs you can create with those. I wanted something completely different than my other examples, so I decided to go with the Rainbow and Sun. I used the same Rainbow and Sun in a video recently, and I'll link to it here if you want to see another design with them. Now the design and how it works will be a little bit different depending on the products you have, but if you play around with it like you'll see me do here, I think you'll be able to figure it out to create your own design. Okay, so I'm going to start with the background first. I used the Lawn Fawn Puffy Cloud Border Dies, and I cut from some scrap paper. This is just copy paper that I had left over to recycle. And I am using my life-changing blender brushes along with Altenu Sea Breeze ink to apply a light amount of color onto the background right along the cloud border. This will give me a very soft, cloudy-looking sky. I didn't want anything too bold because I want the focus on the uh, sun and rainbow that we will add. So this is the Honey Bee Rainbow Wishes stamp set that I'll be using. And as I mentioned, I have used it in a video uh, recently, so I'll link to that. And this will give me a completely different design today. So I went ahead and I stamped and colored a rainbow and a sun, and I used the coordinating dies to cut the sun out. Now I'm gluing the sun towards the top of the rainbow so that I will peek out when we create our card. 
I also took a piece of white cardstock and used one of the cloud border dies to cut from it. This piece is much bigger than we need, but I figured it would be best to start big and then trim off the excess so I can get it just right. Okay, so now I want to plan out where my rainbow will start. I want it towards the bottom of the card behind the cloud, and then we'll pull it up to reveal it. So I position the rainbow in the sun towards the bottom of my background, and I'll hold it there and then add the cloud piece on top of it. And I just want the sun peeking out from the cloud. I will then hold this in place with a little bit of tape and then trim off the excess of the cloud piece. I do this a lot where I use tape to hold things together just while I figure out where they'll be and maybe trim edges or whatever. And you can reuse those pieces quite a few times. Now we need to create a slit in our background piece that has the clouds and it needs to be behind the cloud piece. So what I'm going to do is put the cloud piece at the bottom, then I'm going to use my pencil to make a mark towards the top of that cloud piece. So I have a little mark there and now I'm going to use my trimmer to cut two wide slits that are very close together. So basically I'm mimicking that slot die that we used earlier, but this is long. If you do not have a trimmer that allows you to cut two slits like that close together, you could instead use a craft knife and a straight edge. The reason my slit is so wide is because we have this wide rainbow that we want to have pull up when you pull on the tab. So there you can see how the rainbow pulls up but doesn't come completely out, which is a good thing. But just in case, I'm going to put little feet on the bottom. Remember how there were feet on the pull tab of my previous examples to keep it from coming out of the slit? Well, I put little feet on the bottom of my rainbow just to make sure that it doesn't come out. So there you can see how it slides in and out very easily. My feet were a little too wide, so I'm just going to trim them down a bit. You'll notice that I continually test it to make sure that the sun and the rainbow are appearing how I want them to appear. That's just part of the process. So now towards the bottom, I'm adding my little cloud. You could use foam tape if you want, but I just decided to glue it right down. Just make sure you don't glue over the slit. Now it's time to assemble. So I'm putting my rainbow and sun into the slit and only allowing the sun to peek out. I will then flip it over and put foam tape all around the rainbow. Just make sure there's some wiggle room on the sides and that you have the foam tape along the bottom so that the rainbow doesn't slide out of the bottom of the card. I then can add that onto my note card, remove my temporary tape that was holding it in place, and there we have our fun slider feature. On a piece of thick recycled plastic that I got from my trash can, I stamped pull here with black stays on ink. And so it's just a thin strip with the stamping at the top. I'm putting some double-sided tape on the front of this thin strip, and I'm going to tuck that behind our sun so that when the person pulls on that clear piece where it says pull here, the sun and the rainbow will come out. The shine die cut is from the Birch Press Big Shine Sugar Script Die Set. Boy, that's a mouthful. And I cut that from some gold glitter cardstock that I had in my scrap drawer. I added that onto the cloud piece, and I actually stamped on the inside good, uh, Sending Good Vibes, which is from the Mama Elephant Mini Messages stamp set that I showed you earlier. I thought that went nicely with the rainbow. I like that this is a very simple card when you look at it, but when you pull on the tab, that fun rainbow pops out. So for this card, I had completely different products than the ones that I showed you with my mail cards from earlier, but I used the same technique. So I was inspired by those products. So I encourage you when you see a video or something and you really wanna try that technique, to try it with what you have. It's really fun and rewarding to kind of make what you have work for different techniques. Okay, before we go, I had one bonus card I wanted to share with you because it's another fun way to use that mail drop stamp set and die set from Concord and Ninth, and it is to make this mailbox. I'm just gonna show you parts of it, but I wanted to include it because it's such a clever idea that they came up with. So I have my pieces all done here. I stamped and colored a bunch of pieces from the mail drop set. And I also have a background piece that I stamped with the Poppy Stamps Picnic Plaid background. So here's that stamp set. And I stamped that with Simon Says Stamp Fog Ink. So it's very subtle, but it adds a little bit of interest to the background. And I've just kind of laid my pieces out on the card there. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece. And I have a cute little snail on the top. 
Now I also have the door for my mailbox and this is how you create this little door feature. You stamp both the front door of the box and the box itself. And I'm putting on the front of the door the word post with white embossing. And on the inside, it says long live snail mail, which I also did with white embossing. Now there are little feet that the die cuts for the front of the mailbox. This is the same die that I used for the post box that I showed you earlier. So I'm holding the front of the mailbox onto the back and I'm folding those little feet to the back. And now this opens to reveal that sentiment, sentiment inside. I just think that's fun and I love that all of these ideas come from the same stamp and die set. I also stamped open on the door of the mailbox and I did that in a light ink and I stamped it from the Honey Bee One of a Kind stamp set. Now when you take this out of the envelope, the door will pop open a little bit which I think is great because it lets the person know that they can open that to see the little sentiment inside. So I just thought this was a really inspiring idea that Concord and Ninth came up with. But think about other products that you may have like windows or door stamps or dies where you can create an interactive feature where something opens to reveal another sentiment. I just found these products very inspiring and I thought it'd be fun to show you different ways to use them and also how to use a product to inspire other cards too. Okay, so there you have a bunch of ideas for you today. I hope that you'll give some of them a try. If you're interested in the products that I use, they are linked below in my YouTube description. I also have other videos here in the middle that might be of interest to you. I always appreciate this time that you spend here with me. I thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful week.